Hey guys, my name is Katarina Berry. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing some tips for beginner art models. I've been practicing art modeling for about two years now, and I've learned some things through trial and error, trying some things that work and some things that don't work so well. And I've put together a pretty extensive list of 25 tips that I'm going to go over with you in this video. So brace yourself because might be a long video. Um, anyway, if you would like to check out uh, the two other videos I've made recently, one is what art modeling is, and the second one is what art modeling is not. Should be also showing up right above my head. So check those two out, and also check out some additional resources that are going to be in the description to this video. Without further ado, let's get started. So number one, get in touch with your body. And what I mean by that is whether you're doing portrait modeling, which just involves your bust area, your face mainly, or you're doing um, art modeling that is a little more focused on your figure, which could imply you being nude, um, you really need to connect with your body. And I would suggest doing some gentle restorative yin yoga. At least that's what I do. And I actually have a video on that as well, which should be showing up somewhere um, now. And this type of yoga allows you to connect to your body in a very soothing, relaxing way while focusing on your breathing as much as on stillness and relaxing into the uncomfortable. A lot of what you're going to be doing in art modeling is relaxing into the uncomfortable because you're going to be holding poses for extended periods of time without being able to move. So you really need to be in touch with your physical body and how it feels and how you feel and what it needs and just really get in sync with it. Number two, self-care. Um, I like to do a face mask uh, and possibly an eye mask, a lip mask um, before I art model. I try not to wear any makeup to the art modeling sessions because I want the artist to be able to see the true uh, work of light and shadow and my skin tone um, during the ses session. So um, I, what, I, I, what I do instead is I focus a lot more on self-care that is, um, uh, you know, more dedicated to moisturizing and, um, you know, scents and, and feeling luxurious, this kind of spa experience. Whether you're a guy or a girl, you know, using a lotion and doing, taking a few extra steps to maybe take a longer shower, maybe take a long bath and just really kind of feel like you're taking self, self doing um, more self-care than usual. Uh, it's going to improve your experience with art modeling because it's going to help you be more connected, more in touch with your body again. So number three is self-love. Now, when I first uh, did an art modeling session that involved me doing figure modeling, which involved me being completely nude, I had a lot of issues with my body, my, my self-image and my uh, shape, my size, my weight, my height, and pretty much everything else. But art modeling has helped me accept myself a lot more and connect to myself a lot more in a way that allowed me to appreciate the body that I have and appreciate um, having this body and, and, and to love this body even. So self-love is something that art modeling is deeply connected to in my opinion because it allows you to allow yourself to just be and see how people create art from that, from just your presence, without you having to modify yourself or fit into anyone's expectations or standards. It's a very empowering thing. Number four, self-appreciation. So you have to be able to find beauty in pieces, artworks that are not very flattering. And I've had quite a few pieces that artists created of me that were not flattering. They were not satisfying to my ego because that's not how I would like people to see me. But I've trained myself to find beauty in that because that's someone making an effort to capture what they're seeing and what they're seeing, who am I to judge? So you have to find that self-appreciation and art modeling is actually a great way to do it. But you have to be prepared to see beauty in the art that is using your likeness, but may not be perfect, at least not according to your standards, and still appreciate it because you still contributed to it, and it's still valuable to the artist that created it, and to the people that will see it afterwards. 
So number five is you need to confirm the legitimacy of this task because art modeling can seem to be different things to different people. It may seem to be uh, inappropriate or weird. And again, I've made a video that I mentioned at the very beginning that talking about what art modeling isn't. But you have to, uh, you know, reevaluate your own perception. You know, if you go to any museum, you will see artworks depicting nude models throughout history. And that is legitimate. Art modeling is legitimate because it allows artists to, to experience what a human body is actually like when you paint it from in person, you know, and, and when it's breathing, when it's moving, when it's shifting, when it's human, alive. It's so important to the study of human condition. So it's a very legitimate task. You just need to know it. Number six is uh, to make sure that you're getting paid. Now, if you're volunteering for a friend's project, if you're doing something that you really genuinely just want to do because you trust this person, you love them, you appreciate them, and it's going to be fun for both of you and you're kind of in this together, that's one thing. But if you're doing it professionally, if a group of artists is inviting you to pose for them as a model, whether it be for a portrait or for a figure, you should be getting paid because it's a legitimate paid position. It's it's a job. It's hard work. So if you aren't getting paid, don't do it. You know, especially if it's a group of artists who are creating art from your likeness and, you know, you're doing work posing for them. You should be getting compensated. Now, it may not be much, but it's a job. So number seven is don't overdo anything. Don't go overboard. Don't go crazy. Don't try to do the hardest pose you've ever seen. Don't select an uncomfortable pose. Don't try to stretch yourself too thin. Don't try to uh, do, you know, an hour of a pose without any breaks if you're being offered breaks every 25 minutes or every 30 minutes. So, you know, just, just know your know your, you know, know your limits and don't be afraid of to, to establish them. You're human and it's, it's job. It's a work. It's, it's a type of work. It's uh, a job. So yeah, you certainly should be setting these boundaries and making sure that you take good care of yourself. First of all, uh, number eight is try to wear like little to no makeup. And that's what I like to do because um, even though you, you might want to look a little more perfect, a little more polished, um, you know, I think it's, it's important that, uh, the artists get the, um, the experience of painting what true human body looks like, what skin looks like with all the undertones and all the complexities and all the shades and all the variations. So it's, it's a personal preference, but I just decided to include it because one less thing to worry about. You know, um, this is something that's based on um, drawing a human body. And it's not necessarily judgmental about what kind of body, whether you fit in, whether you're this or that. It's, it's all inclusive. It's the only qualification to being an art model is having a body. So, you know, I think um, it's, it's a little more liberating to appear as natural as you can, at least to me. Number nine is relax. Um, this takes a lot of patience and there's a lot of stillness involved in art modeling. When you're posing as an art model, there's a lot of n no movement, just being still and trying to relax as much as you can into the pose, but also being focused and expressing an emotion. And, and, and there's a level of tensity, this holding this pose and, and, you know, keeping it and not shifting out of it. So it's, it's pretty challenging, but you need to be able to relax as much as you can, because that's what's going to mean being able to hold this pose for as long as you can. So if you can find ways to make it more comfortable for you to still allow the artist to maybe capture a specific shape, but to make it easier on your body to hold that pose, do it. Allow yourself to relax. That's very important. You shouldn't try not to. You shouldn't try to make it harder for yourself should try to make it more comfortable for yourself because that's going to actually improve the quality of your work as an art model. Number 10 is meditate. Um, I don't meditate that often, but I actually like to meditate while I'm holding the pose. 
it may sound a little strange to some people, but and sometimes it's a little difficult to do, but I find that focusing on breathing and really focusing on the present moment and trying to stay as centered as possible and try to not count time, try to not estimate how many minutes there are left to a pose, helps me a lot. It actually kind of makes the time, well, I want to say disappear, but not quite. It just kind of becomes a little less linear. It's just kind of a, something like a, um, I don't know, it's, it becomes a different kind of experience for me and it makes it a lot easier to get through posing. Um, so meditation is maybe something you should try in your spare time and see how you can incorporate that into your art modeling because it certainly is a cheat that I've figured out for myself. Number 11 is look up the poses. Even as an experienced art model, I like to look up the poses before every time before I go into an art modeling session. Uh, just to kind of refresh and get a new idea, new perspective, and possibly find a new, different approach. And sometimes I'll, um, you know, I'll, I'll look into some art uh, magazines and um, some some art books that I have to see some of the paintings and what the models did in these paintings. So it's it's always interesting to see what kind of shapes and forms and poses a human body can assume and what kind of emotions these poses communicate what kind of an emotional challenge would that pose to the artists that are painting the pose that always that always fascinates me that aspect um, of being a muse always means a lot to me so uh, number 12 is uh, what i kind of already mentioned but look up the paintings go to a museum uh you know and, and i know i'm recording this video during a, a difficult time when uh, the world is on quarantine. So this may not be an option right now, but it certainly is an option online. You can visit the websites of a lot of museums in the world and find a lot of works online, a lot of masterpieces, a lot of paintings online. So even if it means doing so virtually, visit a museum and look at some of the paintings and look at some of the poses and some of the models. What did that pose communicate? And Imagine being a model and holding that pose. How do you think that worked? What do you think was maybe supporting her body or maybe she had to take breaks or maybe she was pretty comfortable? Think about these things. Number 13, bring water. I've been to several um, art modeling gigs where there was just wine um, or coffee or... Um, some other drinks and I always like bringing my own water to it because you may want to have some wine but you may also just want to stay hydrated because a lot of these poses they can be pretty taxing on your physical you know uh, well-being because you may be sweating it may be hard it may be physically demanding and you you want to be able to hydrate no matter what so definitely bring water number 14 uh, get there ahead of time. You, you want to be able to not rush through, you know, getting ready to pose, especially if it involves figure modeling, nude modeling, you know. Um, you may want to get there a little bit ahead of time so that you have enough time to get ready and relax and check out the space and, you know, see where you're going to be positioned and what poses are going to work with that environment and the lighting and everything else. So for the, sake, for the sake of feeling secure and comfortable and prepared, I like getting there on time or actually ahead of time and just kind of scoping out the space and feeling the energy of the space and getting ready and, and really getting kind of, you know, grounded in that, in that space. So, so that's just me. Um, but number 15, um, Test out the poses during breaks. That's also something I like to do, especially with figure modeling. Um, assuming a, a pose while you're on a break, uh, especially when you have a decision in, in, in what poses you're going to be doing. If, if you're just told how to pose, then that's not uh, something you should worry about. But if you're kind of deciding what poses you're going to be in, um, then during the breaks, uh, when there is like a rotation of poses, I like to try out the poses. And if I'm preparing for a 10 minute pose, uh, there is a level of tolerance that I'm going to have that I will not have for a 25 minute pose. So it's good to test things out and kind of try them out and see how they feel before you choose to do it actually. So number 16 is 
focus on the emotion. And as I said, I like to meditate in the pose that I'm assuming, but I also hold on to that emotion. There's an emotion, an expression of the pose that the artist is seeing um, that you're communicating to the artist through the pose that the artist is trying to capture through you. And, and it's good to focus on that emotion. It's good to embody that emotion because it makes the pose more believable and it makes the art out of art modeling, in my opinion. Number 17 is relax into the stillness. And as I mentioned, uh, it's easier to do if you're a little bit more familiar with uh, yin yoga or restorative yoga, where a lot of the poses are longer and they are a little more focused on relaxing into a position that may be challenging for the body, but yet it's, um, it's something that the body <clears throat> can kind of uh, ease into. So art modeling is very similar to that. So learning to relax into the uncomfortable is an art and a skill, and it's very useful and very helpful in art modeling. So number 18 is encourage artists. During the breaks, I like to go around the room and check out the works of the artists that are creating them and just provide some really positive and uplifting comments. I usually say something like, wow, great work. This is so beautiful. I really love this. And I try to focus on the positive aspects because these people are, uh, first of all, they are the ones who are hiring the model. And second, they are students. Everyone's a student of the art. Even the most inspiring artists are still the students of the art. So there's never a point, you know, beyond which you should stop learning, especially when you're an artist. So I like to encourage that type of learning. I like to encourage the artists. I like to compliment them. And to me, that adds this extra layer of being an art muse in addition to just being an art model. So to me, it's it's very important and it definitely shows a, a, a difference when I see an artist's eyes light up and they, they go like, really, you really like this? You know, I'm really, I'm not really good, but I'm trying my best. And just to see that, that, you know, that inspiration, that's, that's what being a muse means to me. Um, Number 19 is take pictures of the work. Um, some artists have given me their artwork as a gift after the art modeling session would come to an end and I'm very grateful. I have quite a collection at this point, but most artists will not do that because they're, they're drawing this either to compete or to practice or to create a new masterpiece. So they will keep their work and that's totally fine. But what I like to do is take pictures of their artwork because I have this collection that's digital collection stored you know, in my files, but they are all the pictures that I've taken of all the works of art that, was, that my likeness was used in creating. And it's always interesting to see all the different points of view and perception of how people see me and how people how artists, you know, what kind of works they create uh, from observing me. So to me, that's also very educational and, and interesting and fascinating. So I highly encourage that you do that. And you may not realize that that's a good idea at the very first, but if you watch this video, maybe you will, and you will have this entire collection of all the, you know, different ways that you've been painted and drawn. And that's an incredible thing, such an incredible thing. I'm very grateful for this practice, actually. Um, so number 20, don't judge yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself. Don't judge yourself. Don't go around the room looking at different pieces of art that are created from your likeness and going like, ah, oh, you know, I'm not beautiful. I'm this, I'm not, I'm to this, I'm to that. It's not going to help you. And, and that's not what people see. That's not what the artists see. So don't let the ego get involved. Don't let the self-critic ruin everything because it's such a beautiful, such a pure creative process. And if you get too self-judgmental, too self-critical, you're going to ruin your own experience and you're not going to be as involved in it as, as, you know, engaged in the process. And I would, I would not recommend that because your self-criticism is also very, uh, very much just your own point of view and others, others may see it very differently. So just relax and just accept yourself and try to remove that self perception from the process and just try to observe yourself as, as an inspiration, as a muse, you know, instead of having that self criticism kind of come in and ruin things. Number 21, um, try to see the artists in the work, not you. 
everyone has a different point of view. And if you do art modeling and if you pose in a figure modeling session, you're going to go around the room, you're going to look at the different works of art, and you're going to see all types, all sorts of perceptions. You're going to see different pictures, very, very different views. And although it is your likeness that is being used in these images, it's the artist who is painting them, and it's their reflection that is being painted as a result. So when you look at these works of art, instead of judging yourself, try to see how does this reflect the artist? Not how does this reflect me, but how does this reflect the artist? How is this work a mirror of the artist who painted it? It's a very interesting question, but it may lead you to realize that everyone sees you differently. And so there is no universal one way that everyone sees you. So it can actually be really liberating. Number 22, be proud of your courage because it takes courage to show up like this and to be an example of a human body, you know, when it comes to artists drawing a human body. And it takes courage to take off clothes and, and be so vulnerable and so exposed and all for the sake of inspiring others and helping them master their skill and draw inspiration. So if you've decided to be an art model and you've taken the steps and maybe you've modeled before, you're about to model, take pride in that courage because most people are not courageous enough to do that. So it's a very special type of form of expression and it takes a lot of bravery. And you're very courageous for doing that. And you're very courageous for doing that, especially if you're trying to deepen the connection of yourself to yourself through that process, to accept yourself more, to love yourself more, to maybe liberate yourself more. So be proud of that because that's really impressive. Love yourself a little more is number 23. Every time you do art modeling, learn to love yourself a little more. Learn to accept yourself a little more. Learn to embrace your body a little more and learn to be grateful for the way that you are. Because there is no one like you in the world and that's the beauty of art modeling. It allows the individuality and the humanness of a person to shine through the art that they inspire. And it's such a beautiful process. Number 24, accept your flaws. You have to be okay with being imperfect because that's what actually inspires art. We all have imperfections as human beings. None of us are perfect or even close. So it's very special to be able to be vulnerable enough to, to show these imperfections, to show these flaws openly to the rest of the world and, and allow people to create art from observing you with all your flaws and all your curves and all your secrets and all your self, your whole entire self revealed. So every time you do this, there's a reason to love yourself a little more because you've revealed yourself a little more. And so that means that you've embraced the world just as much. 25, the final point, take notes and improve. So it's good to reflect on your experiences as an art model every time you do it. Um, possibly even if you're open to it, take uh, input and criticism from the artists and ask them which poses they like best and why. And also to, to take your own notes from the artwork that you see, from the pictures that you may be taking of the artwork that is created with your likeness. And just seeing which poses were more challenging to the artists, which push them, which poses push them a little further, which poses made you look uh, you know, maybe very interesting, a, a new angle, something that was complex yet very beautiful. So take notes and practice and try new poses, look up new poses, implement, ask for advice and continue improving your craft. And if you're watching this amidst this crazy time of a global pandemic, then just know that there are still opportunities for art modeling. There are video live chats where art models, uh, although they are maybe a little more dressed than nude due to the privacy concerns, they are still posing for artists online through group chats, through Zoom. 
And so the opportunities continue and still art model art um, figure drawing classes still include art models uh, that are posing using digital technology. So the opportunity is still there, always has been and always will be. So be brave and go for it and explore, experiment and learn and get better. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this type of content, please uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And um, if you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. I always respond to all the questions that I get. And once again, for additional resources, check out the description of this video. And I will see you in the next one. And until then, love you so very much. Hope you can feel my love. Bye.